Hey Mike. What? what? Who's got next? What's good, y'all? It's your man, Hezo, and welcome back to the Black Tower. I always got next, you feel me? Whoo, man, what a game, man. That, <laughs> that game was probably a lot closer than it should have been. Atlanta really, really almost sold at the end of the game after being up 15 points, but what else is new? Atlanta has officially clinched a play-in spot with that win and put the, put the Mavericks on the ropes, looking like they might miss the playoffs now. I think five games under 500. Luka and Kyrie got a lot of work to do and not a lot not a lot of time to do it. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Drop a like on the video. We got a lot to dive into. So let's get right into it. So Trey and Luka head to head once again. Neither guy really played well in this one. Trey had a lot of nice passes, but what he did not shoot the ball well once again. Uh, Luka did not really shoot the ball well. It was really all Kyrie for Dallas in this one. Uh, he really he really came out and just it just got off to a hot start. Really was I felt like he was making everything he took, and he's been just a hot killer in the past i mean he really just dominates the hawks it seems like every time we we go up against Kyrie, and this game was really back and forth for most of the game atlanta closed out the first quarter on a nice little run not a lot of defense in this one as always i mean it seems like that's really all it is for the hawks and mavs neither team can play defense now dallas is one of the worst defensive teams in basketball since the Kyrie Irving trade and i don't i don't think they're going to be in the playoffs because of that because they just they cannot stop anybody but Kyrie continued to cook really continued to carry the mavs in the first half really throughout the entire game Atlanta was up for going in halftime now the second half things got kind of interesting now JC had a sneaky quiet good game he, he finished with a double double I think 18 and 10 he had four threes in the game and we, we all know JC's kind of struggled with his long ball this entire season but as of recent over like the last 10 games or so he has shot the ball a lot better than he has throughout the entire season now against Brooklyn he couldn't buy he couldn't buy a shot but that's another story for another day Atlanta went on a huge run in the third quarter went up by as much as 50 15. And it seemed like they was about to run away from this, you know, run away with this game. You know, with Dallas being on a back-to-back, then we, we weren't really sure how much legs they had left going down big. Were they really going to be able to make a run to get back into the game? And they did. After Atlanta went up 15, they shot one for 13 from the field. I think it was the rest of the third quarter. And after Jason Kidd called that timeout after going down 15, he puts JaVel McGee in and left him in, I think, the rest of the game. And he played incredible. JaVel McGee was a huge reason why Atlanta, or I'm sorry, Dallas was able to climb back into this game with doing a little bit of everything, crashing the glass, rebounding, blocking shots. Like, JaVale McGee had a, a really solid game for the amount of minutes that he got. Pretty much played halfway through the third quarter and then the entire fourth quarter and then most of overtime and just played and just gave, just gave so much energy and, and big minutes, which was what Dallas were really what was really what they needed because they were really struggling crashing the glass. This game game this game came down to the wire. It was back and forth the entire fourth quarter, and then it seemed like every time Atlanta was about to you know kind of pull away in the fourth quarter, it just seemed like somebody was hitting a big play. Most of the time it was Kyrie. Kyrie hit two huge shots down the stretch of the ball game to get the, to get the game tied. Atlanta had several opportunities opportunities to put this game away before it gets got to overtime after christian wood missed the game tying free throw you have to either corral the rebound or tip it far enough to where the time is going to run out hawks didn't do that mavs get the ball and then clint capella come on bro what are you what are you doing what do you why are you fouling javel mcgee when you know it's going to be a lob with only 4.4 seconds left like bro just contest the shot he more than likely is not going to be able to get that tip in if you just play solid defense. He fouls him, and JaVel, thank goodness, missed the first free throw, hits the second one to send the game into overtime. Now, I point that out because that's two missed opportunities Atlanta had to close this game in the fourth quarter and couldn't get it done. And that was based off of the rebounding and just, just meant a mental error by Clint, Clint Capella, you know, pushing JaVel McGee in the back. Like, it's just, I, I don't even know what to say. It just was a, a bad error. Obviously, we got out the you know out with the win, so it didn't matter in the grand scheme of things. But it could have really went the opposite way. And we really could have sold and lost this game. Overtime was more the same. Back and forth, back and forth. I really wasn't sure who, who was going to win at that point. But Trey got fouled by Kyrie at the end of the game with 1.4, I think it was 1.4 seconds left, which it was a foul. I know some Dallas fans are going to out there being saying, oh, he didn't even touch. No, that was a foul. Trey knocks down both free throws. Luka heaves it 
you know, at the other end to try and win the ball game. A very tough shot. He almost hit it, though. <laughs> very close to going in. Atlanta comes out with the dub in overtime. Now, again, this game was a lot closer than it really should have been. After Atlanta went up 15, they should have put the game away. But you can't go one for 13 in that next stretch of minutes and expect a, a team like Dallas with the offensive firepower that they have to not climb back into the game. And that's what we saw. So I'm gonna get into my final takeaways for this game. Uh, number one was the offensive rebounds for Atlanta. A lot of second chance opportunities and mainly Sadiq Bey. Sadiq Bey had five offensive rebounds and was just out there hustling, playing with a lot of energy. And, and again, I've said this before, I love what I'm seeing from Sadiq. No, he doesn't always, he's not always on fire from three, but he really does bring a lot more to this team than just shooting the basketball and we saw that tonight because he came up with a lot of huge second chance opportunities for the Hawks number two was the Dallas missed free throws at the end of the game I mean Christian Wood missed a free throw to, to pretty much to tie the game JaVel McGee missed a free throw to win the game they missed I think what five or six free throws in the fourth quarter alone Dallas probably could have won that game if they made their free throws I'm thankful that they didn't we came out with the dub. Trey made his free throws at the end of the game. But even JC missed, I think, missed like four free throws tonight. That was one, you know, kind of one knock I do have on JC tonight was, was you know, his free throw shooting tonight. He just was not was not there from the free throw line, but he did play an overall solid game. Trey made his free throws and ultimately was able to come out with the win. So my third and final takeaway for this game was the impact of JaVale McGee for Dallas. He really was was the energy again the energy and everything that they needed that they did not really have during that whenever Atlanta went on that run Dallas was struggling and they were looking for really anything because Atlanta was just dominating the offensive glass all night long and JaVel McGee really boosted them with getting inside buckets getting you know getting rebounds keeping Atlanta off the offensive glass and shout out to JaVel McGee man this is a, a guy who has really fell out of the Dallas rotation but really played well tonight and really was a huge reason why Dallas was even able to climb back into the game. Now, obviously, they didn't come out with the win, but JaVale McGee was a huge reason why it was even a close game towards the end of the ball game. So, I'm pretty much leave it there, man. Not really a, a, an exciting win. Yeah, we got the, the win in overtime, but this was not a convincing win. Uh, Dallas was on a back-to-back. -back. There's no reason why this, this game should have been even. It should have even got to overtime, but it did. It's the NBA. I get it. It is what it is. Luka did not play well. Trey did not play well. I've already touched on that, but Atlanta does clinch a play spot so our playoff hopes are still alive we are still sitting at number eight with i think what four is it four games left now in the season four huge games i don't expect to win the next game because that's the the pattern that we've seen over the last however many months or whatever it is win loss win loss win loss i don't expect to win the next game i think it's uh tuesday night against chicago that is a very, very crucial game, especially since Chicago is sitting right behind us in the standings. You have to get this W on Tuesday to be able to continue to stay as a, you know as that A seed to be able to only win one playing game to clinch a playoff spot. To be honest though, I'm pretty much just over this season. I've been over it for quite some time now. Uh, I'm really just ready for the offseason. Um, I don't know about y'all, you know, y'all Hawks fans out there, but we're about to get smacked in the playoffs. Um, I do not expect us to win a playoff series. I know some of you delusional fans out there, uh, no offense, some of y'all expect us to beat Milwaukee or Boston in the first round. It's not going to happen, bro. We're going to probably lose in five games. Uh, and then we have a, a lot of a lot of growing and a lot of moves that really need to be made this offseason. If we are going to continue to get back to that competitive level going forward, and I th and Trey really really got to be better, man. He he just he has to be better. There's no other way to say it. Trey has to be better going forward. He really needs to work on a lot of things in the offseason. That's another video for another day, man. I'm not going to go too much further into that. Y'all leave your thoughts down in the comments. I'm going to get out of here on this one. I will catch y'all next episode.